Hello watch fans, it's Anders here on Watch On Channel. Today the full review of my very first watch from Longxin. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel by hitting the subscribe button and also hitting the notification bell. Then you will never miss another video. I always have a lot of content coming and I'm getting nearer to 20,000 subscribers. So thanks a lot. It's a huge, huge honor to have so many people follow my humble little channel here. So my first Longxin, it comes in this white cardboard box with the Longxin logo in silver. Inside you find a letterbox. I will think that this letterbox is probably faux letter. Absolutely okay packaging for this watch. It's nothing out of the ordinary. It's nothing too crazy, but still really nice. A huge manual. I think this uh, covers almost all of Longxin watches in a lot of different languages. So inside we find this black box with this faux letter and Longxin in this kind of glossy printing. And we open the box and it is of course the Longxin Hydro Conquest. This is the ceramic 41 millimeter version which they introduced in 2018 at Basel World. So the box has this leather, I believe this is also kind of a, a faux leather interior. This almost, it looks and feels like wood, but it's, it is plastic. And then of course the watch on its pillow, hang tag, and you see I already sized the bracelet that it comes on. And here is this beautiful blue automatic ceramic dive watch. So this is an update of the watch that they introduced more than 10 years ago when they introduced the Hydro Conquest, which is their modern dive watch. And the Hydro Conquest back in those days was introduced with ETA movements and aluminum bezel inserts. In 2018, Longxin, they introduced, they reintroduced an updated version of the Hydro Conquest, which is a really, really popular entry-level Swiss luxury dive watch with a ceramic bezel insert. It now comes in a lot of different versions. You can get this blue one, you can get a black one, a gray one, and a green one. And they actually just last week introduced a bicolor or bi-material one. At least it's with a golden bezel, which is PVD treated. So that looks really nice as well. And then you can actually opt to replace the steel bracelet with a rubber strap if you're more into rubber straps. As we see here, just a little more than 41 millimeters in diameter. It is actually one of those watches that wears bigger than it actually is. 12 millimeters in thickness, a lock width if you want to replace the bracelet or the strap of 21, which is really annoying. So you have to look for 21 instead of 20 or 22 millimeter bracelets. 51.1 millimeter from lock tip to lock tip. So it is definitely on the larger side. And just a little later in this review, you will see how it actually wears a little bit bigger than it actually is. So the thing with the Hydro Conquest is that it's kind of a busy dial, but you see with the newer version here, they actually took a lot of the text that they had on the older version. It's not as busy as it used to be. They still keep the quite famous 12, 9 and 6 numerals and then the date window at 3 o'clock. A lot of people are talking about that this watch would look really great without a date window and I definitely agree. They should definitely make a version without the date. But I actually think for some reason the date just really just falls nicely in on the dial of this watch. So I have no problem with the date and it is a really useful complication. The movement is also an interesting thing with this watch, which we're definitely going to look into just in a few minutes. So at 12 o'clock Longxin and then the winged hourglass logo, which is the oldest trade market watch logo in the world. Very famous Longxin logo. You can see it's an hourglass with wings really cool, which also kind of testaments to their aviation history. The cool detail is that when you look at the crown guards, these brutalist crown guards and the way that they actually designed the crown, which is really, really clever because it's really easy to grab this outer part of the crown when you want to pull it out and set the time or wind the watch. You can actually see this is the hourglass, the winged hourglass, just like the logo. They actually made the crown guard. So just had this in mind because one of the things that was kind of a thing that I thought about before buying this watch was definitely that the crown guards are too big and brutalist. You see, we get a nice sunburst effect and why not have a look at the loom? It's Swiss Superluminova and it's really nice. I think that the loom is definitely 
acceptable and more than acceptable on this watch. It's not the best I have ever tried, but I think with the big numerals you get a really nice effect. And a really cool thing is that both the kind of snowflake hour hand and the baton style minute hand, they are really big and filled with loom, so you get a really nice loom application. So the bezel insert is ceramic with numerals engraved into the ceramic. And like you can see on your screen now, this is a watch that is a real reflection monster because in all different kinds of light, this beautiful blue sunburst dial and the ceramic glossy bezel insert, it really glows. In different lighting situations, this watch changes its appearance, its look, it's almost black in low light and in strong sunlight, it's beautiful blue. So I really like the how this watch actually pops on your wrist because it's just so beautiful to look at. The case is stainless steel, 316L stainless steel, and it's very brutalist made. They made very little with different finishing on the case. It's brushed on the sides and it's brushed on the locks. The locks are curving down as you can see. A really nice thing as you see here, the bracelet it falls down and getting into the bracelet you see we get polished center links. These are smudge magnets. And then you get brushing on the outside. These are pins, not screws, so you have to use a pin tool, which is kind of an, an annoyance. The bracelet is my biggest problem with this watch and why not get into it right now. So the clasp, click, very secure, and then you get a fold over. I like the detail with the 300 meters. Here you see 30 atmospheres, so you can see the water resistance here, which is just a cool little feature. It doesn't really make sense because, of course, you can also see that information on the dial above six o'clock. But a nice little feature, and then the winged hourglass here. So you open, and it's pretty stiff. And here you also see the hourglass from the other side, and then you open. Then you have stamped metal and signed long sheen, which is really nice. Three micro adjusts here. But the thing is, because you have a dive watch extension, you can only use two of the micro adjusts. They should have made some more micro adjusts and a simple click and fold over clasp at a watch that I paid just slightly below 1500 US dollars for, it should be better. You get a lot of micro brands with a lot of better clasps than this one. But I just want to say it's very secure and it's really cool thing that it's small, it's very short, so you don't really get the annoyance of a big clasp on this watch. Also, it's brushed, so all the scratches you will definitely get on a clasp, they will just be a little more invisible. The bracelet is really solid, solid end links, but it's tingy and it's kind of noisy when you're just wearing the watch. It feels a little too much like a Tissot bracelet, just a little bit cheap. But the cool thing with this bracelet it, is that when you have it on your wrist, it feels a lot better to wear than it looks. And it also really has a nice taper, as you can see. So not a huge problem, but I definitely think Longchamp, they should upgrade the bracelet and the clasp. The screw down case back, you can see beautiful winged hourglass here. The Longchamp logo, really nicely made. The bezel is 120 clicks. It's really easy to grip because of the coin etching. It's absolutely no play. I really like the bezel action. It's a really high standard of bezel action. The clicks are really solid. Everything, of course, aligns. This is not a Seiko. So it's nothing like a Seiko where nothing aligns. This is definitely one of the better examples with the SPB143. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do a comparison video of these two watches but it's definitely not to the standard of the Omega Seamaster. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to do a comparison between the Longchamp Hydro Conquest and the Omega Seamaster. So getting into the movement and your screen now, you can see this is a really nice accurate movement. I get between minus one to minus three seconds per day. And you see I get an amplitude of just above or a little below 300, which is just a really nice sign of a healthy movement, partly in-house because it's made by ETA, which is also owned by the Swatch Group, but it's made only for Longchamp, the L888.3. It is a 65 hour power reserve movement. It has a beat rate of 25,200 vibrations per hour. So just like the Omega Seamaster coaxial movement. So on my 18 centimeter wrist circumference, you can see it wears really nicely. As I said, it does wear bigger than it is. If you have a wrist size 
below 15 to 16 centimeters, I definitely think you should go to an AD and try on this watch. It will wear smaller if you wear it on the rubber strap, so maybe that could be an option, but it is a watch that wears bigger than its actual size. And that's because of this Brutalist case, and because it's very long from lock, lock tip to lock tip, we have 51 millimeters, but it's quite slim at 12 millimeters, and the sapphire crystal, which is really nicely treated with an AR treatment, is completely flat, which also gives it this modern look, and it makes it wear really nicely on the wrist. So this is the part of the review where I'm going to sum up the pros and the cons of this Longchin Hydro Conquest watch. First of all, it feels like a luxury watch. It looks like a luxury watch. The bezel action, the dial, the loom, the movement, the ceramic bezel insert, and the crown action, it's luxury. In, it's definitely in the luxury department. This is one of the very best entry-level luxury Swiss watches you can buy below $2,000 in my opinion. Maybe if you're lucky, you can find it at $1,200, $1,300. I paid just below $1,500 from an AD. So all in all, I'm super happy with this watch also because it just looks so nice on the wrist. This blue, it really pops. If you want a little more conservative restraint look, then you should definitely go for the black version. If you want a shiny, shiny version, you should go for the gray because that is really amazing looking. And you can also look for the two-tone version if you want a little bit of gold with this watch. So overall, I'm really happy with this watch. It's not perfect. And the thing that makes it less than perfect is definitely the bracelet and the clasp. Again, this is not bad. This is definitely acceptable. It feels a lot better on the wrist than it feels when you're just fooling around with the clasp and the bracelet, but it's not a really top quality bracelet. And you can definitely discuss if it makes sense to make a time watch with polished center parts of the bracelet. You can just see my fingerprints here. It's absolutely crazy. It's such a crazy smudge magnet. You have to wipe it all the time. If it really makes sense, because after some time, this will become really, really scratched. A good thing is that you actually get half links, which just helps to get the perfect adjustment. So I actually removed a half link on this part. And why not when they're looking into making a better bracelet, which they're of course going to do after they watch this review, just joking, maybe make a slide lock or a glide lock just to make an on-the-fly adjustment of the bracelet instead of this old-fashioned, you have to use a, a little tool to adjust the spring bar inside. So all in all, I'm really happy with this watch. It's not a perfect watch, but it's also an entry-level luxury type watch from a famous Swiss brand. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a comment down below. What do you think about the overall value and look and feel of this Longchin Hydro Conquest ceramic bezel? And of course, just like I said at the beginning of the video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Bye.